Today we're in Los Angeles to talk to a man who's been a veteran of comedy for over 20 years. He's written for Saturday Night Live, David Letterman, and even Seinfeld. He's also a watch collector. His name is Spike Ferriston, and today we're talking watches. Spike, welcome to Talking Watches. Thank you for having me. I'm a big fan of what you guys do. Yeah, likewise. If you could tell us a little bit about your background in, in comedy and in writing. Okay, I'm primarily known as a comedy writer. I, I uh, started on Saturday Night Live yeah. as the receptionist. I went from there to David Letterman in yeah. New York and then uh, went on to write for Seinfeld. Working for Letterman and Seinfeld really kicked the car thing into high gear. Yeah. And these days I host a show called Car Matchmaker on the Esquire Network, which yeah. is a comedy car show. Gigantic steering wheel and a boat horn. You want to hear a loud horn, kids? <laughs> if you watch, you'll see I feature watches all the time. I'm wearing this watch in a show, huh. right? This little Octavia in Sifford colors. And I knew the second this episode aired, I would be on the dash. That's really funny. And I was and in were, yeah. on the dash. Yeah. And that, I don't know, I have a TV show, but being on, on the dash was more exciting than that. That is so funny. Being on your website is more exciting to that. You know, these are the things that I get excited about. I'm fans of what you do and what you, and your site does, so. It is really exciting to be here doing this with you. How did you get into watches in the first place? Hmm. I don't remember the moment I got into watches. Oh, it's all of my New York days writing for Letterman and having money for the first time, sure. I think. I remember walking home one day and seeing a watch in a, in a storefront and you know I had money in my pocket for the first time and I saw this shiny thing and I thought I would love to buy that and yeah. I bought it and it that, that's the moment. It, an old Tag Heuer 2000, that's the one that started it all. And I kind of relate this to crow behavior, you know, when you see shiny things. <laughs> I saw this thing and I bought it and I wore it and suddenly I was off. Sure. Should we go through a few? All right. This watch right here the new Daytona yeah. with a Cerachrome bezel, yeah. oh, right? Yeah. I've Absolutely. learned so much about it from you. I bought for my birthday because of your article. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about you that. and John Mayer yeah. were so over the top. I'm like, why? Wait a minute, these why guys know so, so much, much more. Yeah, why do they care? And then by the time I was done reading what you wrote, I was like, I gotta get one. I've gotta have one. And you're right. I'm in love with it. Yeah, it's a great watch. It could be my one watch goodbye. I, can see I also wanted it because I have an, another Daytona right here, uh, 6263. I believe we call this the Little Red, right? Yep, that's, that's right. the Little Red because it's got the Little Red Daytona in it. But I do wear it a lot. I wear it in the show a lot. And I bought this when my late night Fox show got picked up for its third season. This is the watch I bought on the first season when the show was originally picked up at Fox on my birthday. This is a Tudor French Navy sub with decommissioning papers. No See, Marine National 77 yeah. with the papers. And when I went to want to buy a watch, of course. Ken Jacobs said, get this one, yeah. it's a Marine National. I said, what is that? He, yeah, goes, totally. that? he goes, just trust me, that's the one to buy. Just go with this one, yeah. But very inexpensive at the time. Yeah, and not so much anymore though. Not so much anymore, but, but I love it. A Couple years ago for my birthday, I bought the new Rolex GMT sure. with the blue and the black. I use this watch a lot. It's, a, it's such a great watch because you can just wear it all the time yeah, not and not really it. worry about it. Here's an interesting thing, and I don't know, you're the expert, I'm not, but to me, watch design transcends price, right? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. The watch that I get the most compliments on, not that I'm looking for because I don't care, yeah. but the one people go, nice watch, is right here. This is a Nike watch <laughs> called the Nike Metal Drill. I bought it for $60 with a pair of sneakers, but you can find them on eBay. I have a search there that yeah. it comes up, like if they ever put one up. So I always buy extras. And then one day, a search for Nike Metal Drill comes up and it says the prototype of the Nike Metal <laughs> Drill <laughs> right here. You know, it's a one of a kind Nike. I don't know. I, I think that's, that's fun in my little group of stupid friends. Oh, I could say if there was any doubt that Spike is a real collector, we now know he's a real collector, yeah. <laughs> I really like what Bradley is doing over at Autodromo. He sent me this watch for season two, the Prototipo Nero. Not as expensive as this other stuff. I, I, I believe watches like should be affordable for everybody. Everybody should be able to get a cool watch. This watch, so wearable and so cool. Put this on, get in your car and drive. I like the new Tudor Black Bay Black. Yep. This is what I bought Nothing at the beginning of season three of Car Matchmaker. This okay. was my main watch for the whole season. One of the most usable watches I've ever bought in my yeah. life. You just wind it, there's no date. This goes. Right. These two are getting the most play right now yeah. and the most usage. 
And then, you know, I have a thing for, I have a thing for Hoyer, as you can tell. Have the Octavia here in different colors. You know, Newell's dog condition. Core fam strap. Core fam. I love these words. Core fam. Yeah. Creamy loom. <laughs> so that's another phrase I really like. And you know, one of my, my favorite watches, yeah, uh, my buddies who I drive with, we all have them and we all like to put them on and be idiots. <laughs> this here is that Hoyer Carrera reissue from the 90s. Yeah. Do you remember that watch? Of course, yeah. I bought this my second season on Seinfeld with a little extra money I was making. I was like, I'm going to get another. Watch, so this is my second Tag Heuer. That's very cool. These are a couple recent acquisitions here, these uh, Octavias, the Viceroy, mm -hmm. of course, the yep. cigarette watch. This yep. is one of the later models because you see it's got that little loomy dot there, the creamy looms. Very impressive. <laughs> I, 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 it's not. It's another beautiful Octavia, yeah. the orange. This, this I just got, it's got a Tropic strap on it and a little, I put a little Heuer buckle on it myself. I like to buy the little pieces and I have the I little you. tool and I have the, <laughs> I have to wear different glasses so I can see the stuff, but I love working on the watches. I have my Speedmaster, of course. Gotta have one. Right? Yeah. I'm so happy you wrote that article and said everybody should have one. I bought one, I thought I, I, I felt like I should have one. Yeah. It's one of the greatest watches ever. No question. What else do I have? I've got a 1680 here. Yeah. This is my only Submariner. I don't like that I have to set that date, so I do Stinks. what so many do. You know what I'm about to say? Winder? Or don't set it. I wait for the day it's stuck wow. on to wear it. Wow. So, so right many people now, do that? I think, <laughs> I think you do. I don't know. Don't you do that? And so a little bit about cars while we have you. So you're a Porsche guy. I'm Porsches. I have an old vintage Triumph Bonneville. I, I like vintage cars. Yeah. That's the best way of putting it. It's kind of like why I like vintage watches. Yeah. And I have one or two new machines, just as I have one or two new machines here. You know, this car, I bought it at an auction, kind of a mess, and drove it for many years in Hollywood when I was a writer, yeah. and used it as my daily driver. Which reminds me a lot of these watches, by the way, those the, the vintage uh, Rolexes and any of these silver deals here, like, I mean, doesn't that to you, don't they look the same? Yeah. The silver and nice the black cool. and with little highlights. And the, the 911 on the other side is a special car as well. Yeah, that's the, a 1968 911L Lightweight. It's an old race car that raced in the 68 Trans Am series with uh, Dickie Smothers, uh, one of the Smothers one of the, drives. the yeah. Smothers Brothers. Yeah. yeah, comedy and cars and that whole deal. You know, the quality of my day goes up when I'm in that thing running errands. And I kind of think that the same, the same way about watches. I, I don't know what it is, and it must be stupid to most people, but for us, don't you just feel a little better when you have something nice on your wrist? Absolutely. Right? Really do. I don't, I don't care what anybody thinks about it, but I, it, it picks me up a little bit. For me, cars and watches do that. They make my day a little better, and then, you know, in 10 summers, we're all dead. <laughs> even, even him.